All right, my Bible in 365, brothers and sisters, we have arrived at the book of Mark, and Mark is a good one. This is the gospel according to Mark. Of course, this is John Mark that we are speaking about, and there are some interesting facts about John Mark. John's mother had a large house, specifically, that was used as a meeting place for the church in Jerusalem. Now, we know this because we have evidence in early church history, and there may be some scriptural precedent for why we actually come to this conclusion. It's a, uh, There's a lot to this, and of course, it's one of those things we don't have the time to go over, but nonetheless, this is the John Mark that we are talking about. Now, according to Acts chapter 12, Barnabas and John Mark were actually cousins. You can find out about that in verse 2 of Acts chapter 12, and it may be that Peter was the one who led Mark to Christ because we read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13, where he refers to Mark as his son. And back in those days, when that person did not have an actual familial relationship and somebody would refer to them as a son, it typically meant son in the faith, which means that he probably led uh, Mark to the Lord. And it is interesting because Mark was very likely a child at the time that Jesus was in full swing with his ministry. So that's kind of important. And it also sort of brings us to the dating of the writing of the book of Mark, which was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of between, I would say, 60 to 68 AD. And in reality, it was while Mark was many years later after he had was a witness to all of this. And it was very likely more of a personal account concerning what Peter actually had seen. And there's a lot to say about that. But uh, we'll just sort of leave it at that for now. The other thing to note is that Barnabas and Saul took John Mark with them when they returned from Jerusalem, you know, the conference that was going on there in Acts chapter 15. And Mark went on with them because obviously Mark had experienced some transformation and there were some really neat things that were happening. Mark uh, went on with them on Paul's first missionary journey. And of course, Mark turned back when they were uh, in Pamphylia, right around that area, and he returned to Jerusalem. Now, this is interesting because Barnabas who later on wanted Mark to go on the second missionary journey, created a little problem between him and Paul because Paul did not want Mark to go on that journey because the you know uh, Paul did not think that he was ready or even capable because he bailed out on the first journey. So Paul didn't want to mess around, and he didn't want somebody that he perceived as being incapable, but Barnabas thought that Mark was ready, and actually thought that Mark would be very beneficial to the trip. So the disagreement led to a couple of things happening, right? Number one, uh, Barnabas uh, took Mark and traveled to Cyprus, uh, sort of in a way of trying to reconcile things. And that meant that Paul separated from Barnabas and Paul took Silas traveling through Syria and Cilicia. Now, eventually you need to understand uh, the issues between Paul and John Mark have to have been resolved because 12 years later, the Apostle Paul wrote that Mark was with him during his first Roman imprisonment, and um, he actually writes in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 11, get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful uh, to me for the ministry. So we know that there was a reconciliation there, and it was a really, really uh, powerful reconciliation, and there's a lot to be said about that. Now, we should note this, okay? There are four books that we know in the gospel, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Only three of those books are referred to as the synoptics. That means Matthew, Mark, and Luke have some very similar accounts listed in them, but they have different aspects that they cover. Matthew spends a lot of time emphasizing Jesus as king to a Jewish audience Luke spends a lot of time emphasizing the humanity of Jesus and really brings into play a lot of the names and the people that are involved and the love that Christ had for them in that context, where Mark specifically spends a lot of time talking about what Jesus actually did. Mark, of course, is the shortest of all the books. It's the shortest of the synoptics. It's also the shortest of all the gospel accounts. And you need to understand that Mark was specifically intending to write to what I believe were leaders in Rome. 
uh, or maybe even just a simple Roman audience. And there's a lot of reasons why I believe that. But the one thing we should note is that Mark spends a lot of time stressing the works of Jesus and not necessarily the words of Jesus, which is, of course, why the book is so short, okay? And it is interesting uh, to kind of put this all together because Mark, for example, shares four of the parables that Jesus actually noted, and there were many more than that, yet he talks about 19 miracles that are recorded in very rapid succession. And it is very important to note that the quick succession of events in Mark's are indicated by connecting words in the English language in the King James that are related to one very specific Greek word that's used over 40 times. And that Greek word is translated several different times in the King James, right? Immediately, anon, forthwith, by and by, as soon as, straightway. That's another old fashioned term that's used. And it really is important to note that what Mark does here is he spends a lot of time recording the emotions that were oftentimes associated with people observing the miracles of Christ, right? They were, uh, uh, they, he spends a lot of time talking about the fear, the awe, the amazement, uh, the fact that people were astonished by the miracles that Jesus was doing. And the whole idea is to describe to a very Gentile audience that, of course, Jesus was indeed the real deal, and that he is somebody that not only was real, that he was true, but he is the God of heaven, and there's a reason to put your faith and trust in him. And so Mark becomes a really, really good gospel for us to be reading through when we spend a lot of time to stop for a moment and examine the power of God in our lives. Now, the one thing that I do want to do, because I think it's important, is I want to spend some time, and I haven't done this before with Mark or with any of the other Gospels, but I have emphasized this before with the book of Mark. I want to read the first words in the book of Mark, and then I want to read the last words in the book of Mark because they bear significance, okay? So let me read this, okay? This is really important. It says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make paths straight. So this is amazing. He starts off his account of Jesus Christ by what Isaiah actually wrote. And I think that this is really, really important that we note that, right? Because Bible prophecy literally sets off the story of the miraculous and powerful works of Jesus. And I think that that is so incredibly important for us that want to be able to better understand where Mark is coming from. And it helps us to also better be able to create a connection between the story of the gospel and what the Bible says we would expect concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he did. And that all centers around Bible prophecy. So for people that say, Bible prophecy doesn't really mean anything or shouldn't mean anything to us. That's a real problem. It's a serious problem because we gain so much from the message of Bible prophecy. And I want people to understand that and note it because prophecy is such a critical component of the story of Jesus Christ. And if you don't know the Old Testament and you don't know Bible prophecy, then we have a big problem, right? But let me do this because this is so important. Let me read the last part of the book of uh, Mark to you. These are the last verses of the book of Mark. I'll actually start in verse 15. And this is what, the, what everybody calls the Great Commission. It says, And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And look what he says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And of course, uh, part of the fulfillment of this prophecy was even in the life as early as the Apostle Paul. But look what it goes on to say. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them and confirming the word. Notice this, with signs following, amen. The beginning and the end of the gospel of Mark centers around a prophetic word that is designed to bring glory to God. And I would tell you this, folks, by studying the book of Mark, you will be encouraged to understand the prophetic significance of all that God has done, all that he's doing, and the things that he's about to do. 
It should enhance your faith in the Word of God. It should strengthen you. Literally, every one of the 16 chapters should absolutely astound you and encourage you and bless you. Why? Because God is good. And folks, we see evidence of that in every last aspect of this. Okay, one other thing. Go through my account in the Gospel of Mark. I bring this out in the open. I teach through all of this. You can go to jameskadis.com to download that. I think you'll be really blessed. Hope you guys enjoyed this summary. We got many, many more to come. God bless you guys. You're doing a great job. Well done, good and faithful servants. We love you. God bless you.